Hello, uh, welcome from London um, and a very good afternoon to all the viewers who are watching uh, this live event. Um, uh, I will be your host today. My name is uh, Bashir Ahmed. I am the founding director of BWBS Education Consultants. Today we have um, uh, with us uh, Mr. Mizan Ahmed, who is uh, international officer from Birmingham City University. Uh, Mr. Mizan, do you want to introduce yourself to the, uh, to the viewers, please? Yeah, of course. Thank you very much, Bashir. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Mezan Ahmed. I'm the International Officer for Birmingham City University. I uh, just want to thank you, Bashir, for this opportunity to um, introduce me and give this opportunity for us to work together today for this Facebook Live. Um, I'm very happy to be here. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that. Um, before we head on to the, the segments of this uh, live session, um, I just wanted to um, tell everyone what we're going to cover in this uh, live session. So we will look at the September 2021 course offerings, um, uh, any important deadlines for uh, this particular intake, application processing time, uh, English language and academic entry requirements of Birmingham City University, uh, university's own English test if they have any, and then scholarship opportunities, accommodation and uh, COVID-19 update. Uh, so this, uh, these are the things that we will cover um, about BWBS Education Consultants, which is my agency. Um, BWBS is a global leader in counselling and uh, providing full application support to place international students into UK universities. Uh, we are a British Council certified and UCAS registered agency. Uh, majority of our consultants are former international students um, who experience the difficulties and the challenges UK higher education provides uh, and they come from a variety of nationalities um, and have been trained by our trusted university partners. Our head office is in London, UK, and we speak 20 different languages across our 15 plus branch offices in 12 countries globally. Uh, our consultants are expertly trained to give you the best possible free, accurate and impartial advice. We represent 60 plus UK universities and we have a 98% visa success rate and 99.6% student satisfaction rate. The, the services we offer include free one-to-one -one admission counseling, guaranteed scholarships, uh, fast application processing, quick offer letters, um, universities internal English test, um, and then personal statement writing guidance, uh, credibility and visa interview guidance, visa application assistance, accommodation arrangement, airport pickup and carrier guidance. Um, uh, where we are based, as I said, we are based in London, the headquarter is in London, but we are a multinational recruitment agency. So we have our offices in India, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nigeria, Ghana, Philippines and Morocco. So that is about uh, BWBS Education Consultants. You can see our contact details down below on the um, on the screen. Um, you can contact us anytime during or after this live session. Um, our email address, website address, everything is displayed on the screen. Um, I will now um, uh, ask Mr. Mizan to go ahead with um, his um, presentation or what Birmingham City University has in offering for September 2021. So off you go, Mr. Mizan. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Very, um, let me just try and share my screen. <clears throat> Mike, can you see that screen? Uh, yes, yes, we can see the screen. Okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. Let me just do a search. Okay, brilliant. So, thank you very much, Bashir. Um, so, what I'm going to do is just a quick presentation, just to give you guys all a bit more information about Birmingham State University, <coughs> uh, where we're located, what we do, and what pretty much what we're um, very good at. So, but about Birmingham at the moment, um, Birmingham is actually located in the second largest city in the UK. Um, if you look at the map, uh, where we are located is very central. It's about 80 minutes to London by train. And we have direct links with uh, Birmingham International Airport. It's a very young, very cosmopolitan, very vibrant city. So there's a lot of uh, universities around uh, Birmingham as well. And there's a lot of um, industry leaders in Birmingham too, which makes it a lot easier for all our students to actually stay in the UK, stay in Birmingham, and actually gain a job in Birmingham too. On top of that, it's actually easy to access all across the UK, not just to London, to Manchester, to Liverpool, to Newcastle. We have direct links to everywhere from our New Street Station, which is based about five minute walk away from the university itself. 
on top of that, the university, um, the location where we are, the university is actually based in the city center as well. It's a very multicultural city too. So we currently have over 3,000 international students spread across the whole world. So it's not just coming from Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, it's coming from Nigeria, Ghana, it's coming from Malaysia, it's coming from anywhere across the, uh, the world. We pretty much are attracting students to come over to study at Birmingham City University too. So the university is actually split into four faculties. So we have the ADM, Bliss, CB and Health programs. So we we cover over 300 courses in terms of undergraduate and postgraduate for all our students. Apart from the, uh, um, the health sciences such as uh, medicine, um, biology, chemistry, we don't do any of them, but everything else we do cover, such as public health and nursing too. Um, so there's pretty much a course that is available there for you as long as you know what you want to study. Birmingham City University pretty much has that course for you. Regarding the campus, we are, like I mentioned before, we are based in the city centre. Um, the main thing I want to mention is the fact that we're not a satellite campus, we're an actual university campus. So when you do end up coming to Birmingham City University, you will not be disappointed in terms of all our uh, facilities that we have. Um, these are the main buildings in the city centre campus. So you have the Curzon building, Parkside, Millennium Point and the University House. So on top of that, if you're studying in the Parkside building, for example, it does not mean that you're restricted to, st um, to only be in that one building. You can actually walk around all of our campuses and actually use our facilities everywhere. Even if that's using the cafe or the private study area or even the library, you are allowed to do that. Um, so a map of the actual city centre, like I mentioned, we're based in the heart of the city centre. If you look towards the central, where it says central, uh, Grand Central, that's the New Street Station, that connects Birmingham to pretty much everywhere around the UK. So you can get to London within 20, um, about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, you can get to Manchester in about an hour and 40 minutes as well. So it's pretty much available to you. You can actually live in Birmingham and travel out for your holidays or for your day trips. You can actually do that too. In terms of shopping, you have the Bullring Shopping Centre, you have the Arcadian, you have um, Moore Street, you have everything there literally on your doorstep. The students that do live in Birmingham City Centre, they actually find it a lot more affordable compared to other parts of the UK. The blue icons around the city centre campus at the top right hand corner is our accommodations. So literally all our students will be given accommodation around there. They can actually walk it into the city centre, walk it out and walk it to the campus within five minutes. If you talk about living in London or if you talk about living in Manchester or anywhere else, it's a lot harder to get around the city because it's not accessible like that. All our courses are accredited. Uh, we're very proud to be a platinum standard for ACCA, especially. On top of that, every other course that we have is accredited to a certain level. So depending on the course that you are interested in, the best thing to do is go to our website, look over the course that you are interested to apply for, and there will be a list of accreditations there for you. But the main thing is all our university courses, all our postgraduate, undergraduate courses are accredited, definitely. Almost recently, we've spent over £6.5 million uh, in this year, in the last couple of years, uh, improving our facilities as well. Why we've done this is because the university offers a very blended approach of learning, not in terms of online or anything like that, in terms of you, either do, th you do theory based as well as practical based learning too. So what we try to do is give that practical approach to our students that when they actually go out into industry, they're actually more confident in using for example, the law courts, they're actually um, confident in speaking in front of uh, a juror, in front of the um, the court. So they're, they're, they have that confidence already from the university. Um, so we have a crown court and we have a magistrate's court literally on campus where our students can actually use as part of the course. Bottom left-hand corner is actually the largest green room in the UK. Um, the BBC actually come over sometimes to actually use our green room. So there's uh, programs that you may have seen on BBC that actually they, they have come over to use at BBC, uh, Birmingham City University. So for our students, using these facilities is amazing because they, when they do go out to industry, they'll be using those same facilities later on and they already have that confidence um, to actually use these later on. So it gives them an edge over all the other universities that do not provide this uh, for the students. <clears throat> In terms of accommodation, um, we offer over 2,000 rooms that are available. 
<clears throat> it's a very safe and secure home. The halls have CCTV footage. It's a 24 hour security patrols by the West Midland Police as well. Easy transport links, like I mentioned, like I showed you before on the maps as well. It's located in the city center. It's located five seconds away from the university as well. The, the prices of accommodation varies depending on what kind of package you go for. So you'll be uh, in your own private room with your own private bathroom, but you'll be sharing with about five people minimum. Um, the only thing you need to worry about is obviously your living space in terms of cooking space and everything like that. But we provide you with a cooker, microwave, uh, kitchen space, kitchen utilities as well. So everything there is provided for you. So accepted uh, qualifications for English, um, as Bashir mentioned before, we are accepting a BCU English test as well. We have our own online BCU English test. Uh, it's not been updated on the spreadsheet, but we are also accepting um, the Oxford English test too, um, the IELTS test. So all this information will be available to you at the bottom uh, link if you press that. If you take a screenshot of this or if you want to view it later on, you can go to our university website. You can actually um, search that for yourself as well. Uh, so we are accepting more English tests um, currently. Com uh, obviously, depending on the um, COVID situation, we have had to accept a lot more online provisions as well, which is great for you students, because I understand that IELTS centers are closed and we obviously don't know when that's going to open up again for in the majority of the countries. So please do not think that because you cannot do an IELTS test, you cannot come over to UK, especially BCU, especially because of the fact that we do in our own BCU English test, which is currently £55. But then if you book it in this month and next month, you'll, you'll get that refunded back at enrollment. So technically, it's a free test. Um, so we do run our 16, um, our pre session courses currently. 10 week and the 16 week has already started so we are currently recruiting for obviously the six weeks um and this will be running through uh, the winter program too so this is a summer uh, pre-sessional and then hopefully we'll be starting our winter one too and this all leads up to september intake so hopefully by then you'll be able to apply for your cars after you um, fully pass your pre-sessional as it is done online there's no cas needed it's just basically apply get your offer start the course that's as easy as it is and obviously pay the fee so the fees are 16 weeks is six thousand pound uh 10 weeks is three thousand nine hundred fifty and if you are interested in six weeks it's one thousand nine hundred and fifty pounds if you do need more information please do go onto our website you can actually access that information if you want <coughs> Okay, the main thing, COVID situation. So currently, UK are in the last stage of uh, easing out of lockdown. Actually, yesterday, the Prime Minister actually came on live TV and mentioned to us that the social distancing, wearing face masks, um, everything is pretty much going to be finished after the 19th of July, which is a fantastic for our students because that means face-to-face -face study is back from September. And um, the university is looking forward to welcoming more than five or 10 people per bubble because it's just amazing. We'll continue to do our testing on site too. So you'll be able to do testing every couple of weeks or one or every week. Um, if you do find any symptoms, then you will need to self-isolate. But apart from that, we are very excited to welcome all our students back on campus for face-to-face -face study. Understandable with the red zone, the amber zone and the green zone at the moment. Um, if you are from a red zone, you will need to pay your quarantine fee of 1750 I believe. Um, the university, unfortunately, will not be able to cover that cost, but we will give you an option of uh, doing a, your first semester online. And then once the situation gets better, then you can obviously see travel over. Um, so this is one thing that we've put into place. And if needs be, you can defer over to January too. About our fees, um, so undergraduate fees for September and January is £13,200. Um, we give a scholarship up to £2,000 depending on GPA. Even our postgraduate courses, non-MBA, are £13,200 and the same scholarship of £2,000. If you do pay your fees altogether, we will give you a prompt payment discount as well of another £300. So if you've, you're a very talented student with high GPA and you're looking to study a, a master's in the UK, you can easily get £2,300 off your fees if you pay everything altogether. Postgraduate MBA courses are £15,900 and again, we offer the scholarships too. The only thing that does differ is the ACCA programs, which are £1,200 per paper and there is no scholarships for the ACCA program. 
hopefully that has answered most of your questions if needs be um if you do want to follow us on our social media websites that's our website that's our facebook instagram snapchat and twitter so please do follow us and um what i'll do is now is i'll pass it over to bashir and um take any questions from you fantastic thank you very much um that was a nice and uh, detailed presentation i would say um thank you we have um uh, questions uh, in the comment section but before we move on to that phase i would like to ask a few uh, questions to clarify from my side um the, the, is there any particular deadline for september because it's um close very close to us now although it's looking like there is two months left yeah uh, the uk is very much in control of covid situation hence uh, I believe that this time round it would be face-to-face -face tuition. Yeah. Um, so for that, obviously, um, Birmingham City University would probably expect the students to come uh, in country, apply for visa and come in country uh, well before the start of the course. And as such, the deadlines come. So is that a particular deadline or is there anything the students would like to keep in their mind? What do you advise yeah. or suggest? I mean, one thing I would say is if you haven't applied already and you're waiting for documents, um, don't hesitate. Just make an application straight away. Um, with BWB as well, we offer a fast track service where we can offer um, your offer out pretty much within the same week, if not the week after. So we are offering a fast track option for BWB. So if you are interested to apply, please do contact BWB, get the application in. Um, we can give you a conditional offer depending on anything that's outstanding, for example, English test or you're still waiting for your bachelor's uh, certificate to come or your transcripts to come. Um, as long as you have something in place, such as your passport, a personal statement, um, and some kind of transcript to show what you are studying, then we can actually assess that application to see if we can give you a conditional offer. We don't have a specific deadline at the current moment, but if you are very interested to apply, I would say within this month, get the application in straight away. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, one important thing, I would say a misconception or a myth in the current uh, market based on the previous experience, BCU is uh, a bit slower than the other universities. And I think uh, the, 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 you have addressed it quite well in the recent um, months. And then now it has gone a lot better than before. Yeah. I would like to reassure all the viewers and whoever who um, watching this later, you know, uh, there would not be that much delay. And obviously, as Mr. Mizan confirmed, that BWBS has a fast track service for, B, um, for Birmingham City University. So if you process through us, we can actually fast track uh, your application and get the offer quickly to you within uh, a week or so, roughly. Course, yeah. yeah, so uh, it's not that much uh, delayed uh, like the no. recent past. Uh, no. So that's a very good news. Um, so do come along and submit your application through us so we can get you the offer quickly. Um, so that's one thing. The next thing I would like to clarify is um, the um, English language requirements. You mentioned that there is a lot of uh, online tests that BCU yeah. would accept. Okay. Um, recent news, very welcoming news, um, Oxford International Test, which is also known as OIETC or yeah. ELLT. This is accepted by Birmingham City University. Um, you don't accept Duolingo, do you? No, unfortunately not. I mean, we used to before, but then after um, a certain period of time, we've stopped accepting Duolingo. So um, we will not be able to accept that, no. Okay. And uh, Birmingham City University also has their own internal English test. So that costs £55, but definitely uh, it's free in a sense, because if you proceed with your admission with Birmingham City University and you enroll, then you will get this money back so it is free in a, in a sense of course. yeah yeah so this is free english test offered which you pay first and then you reclaim once you come yeah. uh, to birmingham city university um, scholarships uh, you mentioned about two thousand is there a merit scholarship yeah uh, so for if, students yeah. Not, not the generic two thousand but anything no. extra for the high profile talented students 
No, so um, because our fees are only £13,200, we do offer a maximum £2,000 scholarship. So this is because of GPA. So a very high standard student, for example, a Bangladeshi student studying a four-year bachelor's course in Bangladesh, getting a GPA of 2.8, 2.9, I mean, sorry, 3.8, 3.9 out of four, they'll be able to get a £2,000 scholarship. So anything over 2.75 uh, to 4, you will get a £2,000 scholarship. Anything over 3.5 to 3.7 will give you a £1,500 scholarship. And anything over 3 pretty much will give you a £1,000 scholarship. So we're looking at uh, highest GPA in terms of what classification it would be here in the UK. Okay, so the scholarship is 2000 but definitely as the fee is around 13000 after the scholarship, it is in the range of eleven thousand, and if you pay the full fees, then 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 another three hundred. So it's around eleven k range, which is very yeah. reasonable as compared to the other universities. And um, obviously, Birmingham City University is well renowned, so it's a it's a fair deal, I would say. Uh, of course, uh, very reasonable. Um, that's that. And uh, next thing is accommodation. You you mentioned it. So it is, is it is it like is there any specific discount or uh, applicable to accommodation? Because some universities are doing it. Or no, no, yeah. Yeah, I mean to be fair, if you look at um, other universities, for example in London, their accommodation would be pretty much over, over two hundred pound per week uh, for the accommodation, and that would be just a box standard room without a bathroom, and they'd be sharing toilet with everyone else. Um, Whereas in Birmingham, you'd be paying about 150 to 160 pound, uh, 100 pound a week, and that will give you a private room and a private ensuite room. So you'll have all the facilities that you want for a cheaper price in the in Birmingham. And the living cost in Birmingham is a lot cheaper. As I mentioned before, it's on campus anyway. The accommodation is on campus. It's in the city centre too. You don't need to worry about getting the train, the tram, the bus. You could just walk it so you're saving money on that side too so it's a lot more affordable for all our students to live in birmingham compared to probably living in london or living in manchester for example like that yeah and that 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 is exactly what i was trying to point out there is a, a notion of study in london yeah. in um, students which is ultimately going to cost them more which they don't actually realize no second thing is um there is this, this london-based universities there is high um uh, competition and scholarship opportunities are, are very slim um yeah. and thirdly the accommodation cost and the living cost altogether it's so high in london that yeah. it's better to study um outside london but in the in the, in the good areas like birmingham where the yeah. cost is low and obviously if you think about your career options as well mm -hmm. uh, london being the the, the the most demandable city in the world mm -hmm. uh, it would probably be tough for you to arrange a of job course. but if you go outside london you you get a better career in the sense that you know you the, the competition would be lower also, so you can tell yeah. yeah, sorry, but I just want to say, like, a lot of companies from London are moving over to Birmingham. For example, right. PwC, for example, HSBC, they've uprooted the whole headquarters to move to Birmingham. Why? Because they know that it's a lot more affordable and it's a lot more opportunities here in Birmingham too. So for our students as well, you'll be living in a place where a lot of people are actually wanting to come. Along with that, the HS2 as well opening up very soon, probably in about two years, three years' time. You'll be going from London to Birmingham within 35 minutes anyway. So you can actually get that opportunity to work in London, but live in Birmingham. So have lower living costs, but earn more in terms of London uh, jobs, for example. So the opportunities are there for all our students there, definitely. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the COVID um, updates, it, it's more more of the face-to-face -face tuition this time around yeah. in September. Is it yeah. totally face-to-face -face or is it going to be blended? Uh, what is the current approach? Right? What is in plan? Oh, no, 100%. We're looking for face-to-face, 100%. -face, if if uh, Boris Johnson is saying that sports venues can have over 60,000 uh, people going for football games, then universities won't have a problem mm -hmm. with about 30 to 50 people in a class. It's, it's definitely something that we're looking forward to. Um, if you are in a red zone country, then maybe we can offer you the blended in terms of your first semester online until the country gets better, until you can come onto the AMBA at least. If you are comfortable enough to pay the quarantine fee and i know a lot of students are still happy to pay that then yes definitely come 
um, you can come directly, pay your warranty fee, and then go to university straight after 10 days. It's not a problem. So the option, okay. opportunities are there for you. Yeah. So the flexibility is also there. So if someone wants to continue the first semester from home, yeah, they can still do it? Of course, yeah. Okay. That's the great news. Um, um, so that pretty much covers all the questions I had in mind. Uh, now let's go on to the comments uh, section and show them one by one. Um, so the, the first question is from Sajid. Um, do you have any master's courses with placement? Uh, if yes, how do I find those out? Every single master's course that we have at the moment has an optional placement here too. So it'll be altogether 16 months. So our master's courses are 12 month courses. So altogether you'll get about within that period of time, you get another six months in terms of your placement opportunities too. How to find that out is on our website or you can contact BWB. They can give you more information regarding these courses too. But like I mentioned, Sajid, all our courses have this opportunity for you. Okay. Um, so if it's basically there is a, a course page, if you go yeah. to the course page, I think there is an option of narrowing down the ones with placement, or you can go by schools as well, by yeah. departments, uh, and then yeah. you can find out which courses are offered with placement. And if you have any doubt, as I say, we can help you out, uh, mm -hmm. contact us. The numbers are down below, the details are there on our website. Contact us, we've got 15 plus branch offices worldwide, we'll definitely um, try yeah. to help you. Um, next question is from Ruhul Amin. Is there any bachelor courses starting in January? At the moment, we're still evaluating in terms of if we can add any bachelor courses. At the moment, we don't have any bachelors, unfortunately, but depending on the uh, COVID situation, it is something that we are looking to offer, depending on obviously the current situation in countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, if they do want to defer. Um, so it's something in the pipeline. It's not 100% yes yet. And it's not 100% no at the moment. But more information will be shared out to everyone as soon as we come up to a conclusion. What is it historically? Is um, historically there's here yeah, historically there's no bachelors in January. So historically September is the intake that we have both masters and bachelors. Uh, but in January intake is only uh, postgraduate courses. Okay. All right. Um, next question is from Harminder uh, Ratan Sethi. Uh, management PG courses are available in January? Of course, yeah. Management is one of our popular courses in January too, So, also, as well as September. So we have business management, we have management marketing programs. So they are programs that are available in January and September. Great, great. So it is available, Harminder. Um, next question uh, from Sajid again. What's the foundation or bachelor course tuition fee? How much deposit is required for CAS for Bangladeshi students? Okay, so foundation or bachelor course tuition. So our bachelor courses are £13,200 per year. We don't offer a foundation at BCU, but we do offer it at our international college, which is Navitas. So it'd be something that you would need to contact Navitas for or go through B. BWP that can contact you with somebody at Navitas. I think the fees are a bit different. I'm not too sure how much it is, to be fair. Uh, in terms of tuition um, deposit, it's a minimum of £3,000 deposit for Bangladeshi students. But we do recommend if you could pay up to 50%, it will always help you in terms of your visa interview later on to show that you're more committed and uh, a valuable student to come over. Yeah, and uh, I would like you to uh, clarify this a bit more. Um, some students actually, because they see it on the offer, and then we're trying to establish that, you know, why they should pay more. Yeah. Um, because ultimately they will have to pay it anyway. So what benefits yeah. do you get in terms of visa? Would you elaborate? Of course, yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, if you pay more now, it shows that you're a genuine student. It's definitely before you even come over to UK. Because if, if I was a UKVI um interviewer and I would look at your application and see that you've paid your full fee, for example, of £13,000, I'll think that he's, this person is genuine to come. On top of that, your bank statements will be showing less anyway, so you don't need to worry about showing the remainder of the £9,000 or £8,000. You can just show your living uh, cost and that's it, which is easier for you later on as well. And again, it's all about being genuine, uh, showing the UKVI that you are a genuine student that you would not get rejected for. Yeah, and uh, I would like to add one more point. You know, when someone applies for visa, they show the remaining tuition fee balance yeah. on their full statement, right? So the question uh, comes during the visa interview. Nowadays, the, the visa interview is a serious thing, and then they are interviewing yeah. 
majority of the candidates from South Asia. So yeah. if in the interview they ask you, you know, you, your tuition fee is 11,000, you have paid 3,000, you've shown the remaining um, 8,000 in your account, why did you not pay the remainder? Yeah, when you exactly. know that you will get the money back if your exactly. visa is rejected. So there's, yeah. there's no fair explanation yeah. of that. It's always recommended that you yeah. pay higher amount so that you avoid these types of questions from the visa authority. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question is from Ruhul, um, past degree, past course, BSc 2020. Oh, so he's a recent graduate. Whereas my subject was physics, botany, geology, also SSC 2013, HSC 2015, uh, the GPA for SSC is 4.5 and HSC 3.75. Uh, is it possible without IELTS or Duolingo or ITC for MSc in life science school? Okay, so at the moment, it looks like your highest qualification is a bachelor's. Bachelor, yeah. Uh, what was the grade? Is it 3.75? No, 3.75, I think the, he's talking about SSC and HSC. So, okay, if, yeah. it's, so if it's recent, 2020, I suppose the final certificate will come out, hasn't yeah. probably arrived. Or if, okay. even if it arrived, he passed it. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so minimum requirement for Bangladeshi students doing a four-year bachelor's in Bangladesh, minimum we accept is a 2.75 uh, GPA. So 2.7, sorry. So... If, if, as long as you've got anything over that, most likely you will be able to come on to a master's at BCU. Depending on the course that you're looking to study, um, you would need to do not a Duolingo, you could do the OIETC, or you could do an IELTS, or you can do the BCU English test as well. So we will be able to happily assess that for you. Uh, the best thing to do is obviously put in your documents to BWB, get them to check it out, and then they will make an application for you, definitely for you. And I'll yeah. look at that for you. Yeah, there's loads of courses in life science school, so it's a yeah. it's a good query. We don't get that many queries from Bangladesh for life science, so of course, yeah. I, I I suppose you are a good genuine student. So do get in touch with us. We can actually direct you uh, and help you. Um, IELTS is not available in Bangladesh. We are all aware. Hence the acceptance yeah. of English tests, the online ones. Um, so. It is not a problem if you do OIETC, it should be fine. So get in touch with us and we will help you. Um, he's got one more question, uh, also asking on behalf of my friend, do you accept more than 10 years study gap with relevant managerial work experience for MBA courses? Okay, so at the moment we don't have a guideline in terms of how many years of a study gap, but what we do is we look at case by case scenario. So if it's not myself that looks at it, it's not um, the admissions team, it'll be the faculty as well as the compliance team of it. So the main thing is, is convincing UKVI why after 10 years with such managerial work that you now want to come back to study. So it's all about your personal statement, it's all about your CV, your reference letters, and it's all done case by case scenario. Um, so we do accept it, but I cannot say 100% yes to everyone or no to everyone it's like all case by case that's all it, that's the most right. i say yeah it's case by case so it's a no it's not a no it's not a yes as yeah. well. it depend on the strength of your personal statement and also i think the way you present it what sort of work experience you have whether it is related to your proposed course or not yeah yeah okay thank you for that next question scholarship will be automatic automatic for instance the student yeah of course so we look at your highest gpa and we give you automatic uh, scholarship on your offer letter. So as long as you've got your transcripts, your certificate to show your GPA, <clears throat> we'll be able to give you that uh, scholarship straight away. Okay. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, A.K. Abdul Kayyum. Um, what he's trying to find out is probably for some universities, the students have to apply. Oh, no, there's no application. No. You don't, so this yeah, is you don't automatic to. for BCU. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Uh, next question from um, Anna. Um, I have graduation in chemistry, four-year bachelor, four-year degree with 68%. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to study MBA. Do I need work experience to be accepted? First question. Second question, how much scholarship can I avail? So 
you don't need work experience for our MBA courses, which is um, very different to other universities in the UK. So that's one good thing about BCU is the fact that we don't look at work experience. We just look at your highest qualification. That will get you onto an international MBA course. The the score that you've got, uh, 68%, would definitely get you onto an international MBA. Um, and scholarship, you probably get about £1,500 scholarship for that grade. Right, okay. And um, the, 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 the MBAs, uh, if I can ask you, is there yeah. different rules of MBAs or is just a, a play, plain, simple international MBA? Is there any specializations also available in BCU or MBA? So the, like MBA so the, with HR, MBA with finance? So the good thing about our university is the fact that we cover all modules in one uh, umbrella, we call it. So the international MBA, we do have other opportunities, but not all of them are very popular. They prefer the international MBA because in that international MBA, you'll be learning about human resource, you'll be learning about finance, you'll be learning about pretty much everything over that one whole year. So we have two options. You have the 12 month and you have the 15 month MBA. So any student that does not meet the entry requirements by let's say 1%, 2% or 3%, they can actually go on to do our extended program, which is the 15 month MBA program. Okay. So yeah, so that's also available. It's kind of a pre-masters leading to masters, but we call it extended, right? Yeah. So it's actually 15 month instead of 12 months. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and there's one more thing. That, uh, what's the duration of um, of master's courses in January? Is, this, is it the same? Um, yes. Yeah, so all our master's are, um, are going to be 12-month uh, courses. So if you start in January, you'll be finishing January as well. Okay. All right. right. Um, thank you for that. Um, Anna, hopefully you got the answer for your question. Next question is from uh, Vigneshwar Srinivasan, um, probably from... Um, Sri Lanka or India. I have um, Edexcel Pearson in software development with B Pass awarded in January 2020. I'm from Colombo, Sri Lanka. Okay, completing my BSc in business information at ICVT on Cardiff Metropolitan University, UK. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there are some institutions in Sri Lanka who, who yeah. do the um, you know UK affiliated <laughs> programs. Waiting yeah. for results on next month. Am I eligible for MSc in IT or computing field? Um, uh, how to find this out? Probably entry requirement on the on the yeah. PC. So what what entry we field. need to, yeah. So what we need to do is look at your um, your bachelor's, your BSc that you mentioned, business information, uh, okay. because you're studying at Car Cardiff Metropolitan University. Even though it's in Sri Lanka at the moment, it'll still be studied in a UK standard way, which is great. So the modules should be pretty much the same as uh, UK standard. The only thing is, is the fact that you would still need to do an IELTS test or an English test because you're not studying in the UK and you're not studying in an English standard uh, country as an um, English person. Um, so in that way, you would need to do an English test. But again, um, the IT fields or computer fields, um, we would need to look at your transcripts anyway. We need to go to faculty. Then we need to look at what you've studied at your BSc and then they can make an offer out for you. Okay, yeah, and then obviously, you know, we are here to help. So, Vignesh, uh, get in touch with us. We can help you with the applications, with submission and visa processing, everything. Uh, we have a physical branch office in Sri Lanka as well. Um, so, we can help you out with uh, your admission at Birmingham City University from Sri Lanka. Um, next question is from Charmin. Um, do you accept occupational English test, OET? What is the required score for UG? OET, I know we don't accept OET. Um, we accept the Oxford International, uh, but not OET. It's a different kind of occupation English. I think it's for for the medical courses. For the medical course. No, unfortunately, we don't, no. Okay, right. Because um, you don't do medicine, you see. So this is something that we don't do, like chemistry, biology, physics. We don't do any of these courses. So it's probably something that we won't be able to accept because we don't do them kind of courses. Right, right. And that, that you probably read it in advance. <laughs> we do you have medicine courses after which we can No, start unfortunately doing. not. We do, we do have like courses that, such as public health, which is probably something to do with health in terms of medicine. But uh, unfortunately, no, we don't do anything to do with medicine. Okay. Is there any alternative, like apart from public health? To be fair, to be fair, no. biomedical science and those. Yeah, courses. yeah, we have biomedical science, but it's not very. 
medicine type of courses. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to become a doctor, you'll need to do medicine. So there are the universities which most likely BWB have uh, agreements with anyway. So if you are interested for that, then please do contact them. Uh, they can help you out with that. Yeah, this is a BCU uh, exclusive um, yeah. live webinar, but we do have the options of medicine courses with our partner universities. We have 60 plus UK university yeah. partners. So get in touch. We will be able to help you in other partners that we work with, um, but not at BCU. <clears throat> Next question um, from Fuzul again. Uh, also, what about nursing program options for yeah. semi Nursing, I think. You do yes so we have bsc adult nursing we have msc adult nursing too um so the requirements are pretty much a bit more complicated than a normal master's program you need to go through an assessment with the tutor as well so it's most likely an interview or a conversation we call it uh the qualifications are pretty much the same anyway the ielts i think is 7.0 with no less than 6.5 so it depends on which one you go for so the entry requirements are a bit more higher okay right um uh, what about the uh, entry requirements are higher i mean seven with no compare below 6.5 something yeah. like something like that yeah 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 yeah. Um, yeah and and then for the for some countries you know there is exception like india or nigeria uh, still they need to have probably ielts for nursing courses from my experience yes yes um, definitely yeah yeah it's only because the 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 type of information you will be learning in the nursing course is totally different than, let's say, the international MBA or uh, another course such as business management. The the quality of teaching and the quality of um, other students in the course as well is going to be at such a high standard. And the type of work that you'll be doing too is something that even myself, I can't understand as well. So there's other things that you need to do. This is why the entry requirements are a bit higher and uh, you will need that extra bit of English just to understand what you are learning. Yeah, yeah. And then majority times these nursing programs, especially if it's an uh, undergraduate, they lead to um, NMC registration. So nursing yeah, yeah, yeah. council uh, in the UK, hence the requirement yeah. is a bit tough for English because you yeah. will be studying with the uh, UK uh, students, native yeah. UK yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And one yeah, thing I gotta cool. say, one thing I gotta say about our nurses as well is the fact that we have, you know, the vaccines that are happening in Birmingham are mainly done by BCU nursing um, students as well. So we have Millennium Point, which I showed you before on our uh, campus map. In that we are doing the COVID vaccine at the moment, and it's been done by majority of them are BCU students as well that are doing it. So that's what, something that we're very proud of. And also the children's hospital that is literally of, um, opposite the university as well. We have our nursing students go there for placement years for um, even jobs afterwards as well. So we have a very good understanding in terms of nursing and we've done it for a very long time as well. Yeah, uh, nice to hear that, you know, BCU doing their bit to help tackle this of pandemic course. and uh, something that everyone should be proud of. Of course. Um, Right. Next question. Um, oh, we've, we've shown this before. Yeah. Next question um, uh, again from Abdul Kayum. I want to know bachelor entry requirement for Bangladeshi student. If anyone completed HSC with 70%, is he eligible for direct bachelor? Yeah. So HSC, unfortunately, we do not accept directly to bachelors at the moment. It would need to go through our um, our international college, which is Navitas. Again, you would need to go through another test, do a foundation year, and then come on to do a bachelor's. So altogether, you will get like a four-year CAS, which would include your foundation year. So um, when I showed you the map before, the university house is where all our foundation students are. So it's literally on campus as well. So you don't need to worry about going to another part of Birmingham. It's actually based on our campus. <clears throat> and you'll have your own BCU logo, um, swipe card and everything, and you'll be able to use BCU campus as well. Yeah, for the bachelor courses from Bangladesh, <laughs> the entry requirement is, um, I think, the HSC plus um, first year. Is it first year completion of bachelor? Two years. Or two two years. years. Yeah, two years. Two years. Okay, two years. It used to be one year before, but I think it's been, it's changed recently. Is it? Very long time ago, yeah. But so, um, so it's two years at the moment, but we're looking to change that hopefully soon to just HSC. So hopefully that can come out very soon. Oh, okay, okay. So two year two year bachelor uh, in Bangladesh. There's only three year bachelor and four year. So How basically, it's, it's, it's like a it's like a credit transfer. So when you look at the NARIC uh, statement, it 
terms of comparability of the university courses. The level two is comparable to a level three in the UK. So this is why they would need to do that standard of uh, learning before they come over to do a level three, level four, level five in the UK. So this is the only reason mm -hmm. why but it's something that we're looking actively to change anyway. So hopefully that could change very soon. Um, so the next um, next question is from Bhakti. Uh, public health courses are available. I think course, we probably, yeah. yeah, public yeah. courses. Yeah. I, I don't know which public um, health course, bachelor or master's. I think both are available at PCU, is it? I think it's it's just an MSc program, public health. We don't have a bachelor's course in public health. Okay, okay. But there are health-related courses in uh, yeah. yeah for undergraduate. Um, yeah. So do get in touch with us. We can help you find out a, a, a relevant course. Um, next question is from um, Charmin. Uh, again, if a student's home country is Nepal, the student completed SSC, HSC in Nepal, completed his MBBS in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get a lot of students like that. Yeah. Okay. Kindly, can you tell me which subject you can apply, if possible? What is entry requirement for the student? So, so Nepali what, student studied in Bangladesh. MBBS in Bangladesh. MBBS yeah. is. Why is MBBS by? MBBS is uh, the medicine course. The medicine course. course. Okay. Doctor, say after MBBS, they become doctor in Bangladesh. Oh, okay. 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 Um. To be fair, you, uh, it depends. If you want to do an MBA, you maybe can. If you want to do something like uh, public health, you can do as well. Again, in this situation, because you've done a doctorate course in Bangladesh, you will need to look into the reason why you want to do another course or what kind of field that you want to go into. For example, if you want to open your own uh, doctor surgery, you will need to know a bit more of the business background. That's what you want to do an MBA. Fair enough. You just need to make sure that the personal statement is explain, um, explaining everything in detail as well. Um, on top of that, it's, yeah, it's just basically looking at your personal statement mainly in terms of what course that you want to apply for. The entry requirements yeah. for the student uh, pretty much is uh, we would accept anything over uh, 2.7 anyway for Bandesh. Yeah, and uh, MBBS is a very heavy qualification, I would say. It's a very intense program. So I would suggest you to go for public health or probably uh, master's courses related to health, health life yeah. science. Yeah, those schools. Um, there are plenty of courses available in BCU. Just, just yeah. check out. And if you're unsure, get in touch with us. We can help find out which course is applicable for you. Um, but you should be okay, so get in touch with us. Next question is from Murad. Um, can you please inform me the current status of this application, application reference? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I've thought, I mean, the, the most yeah. thing you could do if you've applied for B, uh, B2BB, contact them. They'll, they'll chase me anyway. Um, if you need to send me an email, I'll, I can find out for you. I'll find out for you right now. But, um, if you do send me an email, I'll find out for you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you applied through our agency or not. If you have, then we can definitely find out yeah. and fast track it. It depends on who your counselor is. And um, as you know, we've got 15 past branch offices. So I need to find out who processed this. If it was through us, then we can definitely help you out and get you an offer within a week from the date of application on a mm -hmm. fast track basis, which is possible for BW students. Um, next question is, um, and also uh, Murad, you know, how to contact us, the, the contact details are down below scrolling for you. Um, next question um, from Abdul Qayyim again, after completing 10th class, if anyone completed four years diploma in engineering from Bangladesh, what is the option for him? Okay, so that's something that we need to look at. I mean, we've never had anyone from that uh, circumstance to be fair to come from 10th and then do a four-year diploma it all depends on what level of your diploma is and what diploma you've studied um, I know what he's trying to say in Bangladesh there is a polytechnic board yeah they do the diplomas after SSC yeah. rather than doing HSC they do the right. diploma which is equivalent to HSC and sometimes equivalent to level three in the UK as well Right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, we haven't had anything from that, to be fair. I mean, I, I've been working with the Bangladesh uh, region for a very long time. I've not had any students come from that background. Um, but it's something that we may be able to look at. Um, we just need to see what level your diploma is. And um, if it is comparable to a level three in the UK, then definitely we could try and get you onto a bachelor's year one. 
Right, right. Okay, yeah. Again, we can help you. Just try to contact us and we will try yeah. to help. Um, finally, uh, um, thanks for the information. And uh, that's from Sri Lanka. Uh, good compliment. Um, uh -huh. I think that, that that's where we should stop. So um, thank you very much for attending this session. Do you have any concluding remark or advice for the student uh, to wrap of up? Yeah, no, of course. I mean, at the moment, um, coming to UK is a very popular thing, especially with the post-study uh, work visa as well. So a lot of students are interested to come over to um, UK. Um, please, if you are interested, like I mentioned at the start of the uh, program, don't hesitate, don't wait. Just get in contact with BWB, make your application. I myself uh, will be looking over the applications anyway, making sure that it goes smoothly to admissions, get everything out for you, for your offers as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, just do trust the BWB counselors as well, listen to them, get everything that they want from you. And um, from my side, I'll make sure that I do everything. And hopefully we can get you into the UK very smoothly as well. And on top of that, I just want to say everyone from India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan, try and stay safe as much as you can. I know the situation there is very tough, but hopefully, fingers crossed, everything will be a lot easier very soon. Thank you. Uh, and we work very closely with BCU. So as I said, you know, we can turn around offers within uh, you know, three to five days in some cases. Yeah. So get in touch with us. We will be able to help if you are interested to study at Brandon University. Uh, once again, uh, thank you very much for attending this event. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll bring you in another live event in future and okay. have a very good day. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you. Bye.